Hello everyone, this is Katie with Kindred Soul Art and today I'm excited to do this bubble project with you and uh, I'll be doing it in live time so feel free to pause or fast forward or um, paint at regular speed with this video. Uh, it's made so that we can paint together if you'd like but if you want to skip ahead you can totally do that. So uh, for this bubble project what we're going to do is we're going to use a technique called negative painting and basically negative painting is painting around your subject uh, so that your subject then stands out and this one is done in layers so you do layers of negative painting and um, the more layers you put on the darker it gets and so you end up with this kind of fun layered effect um, and then we'll go in and add some of the details so the steps that we'll do is uh, first we'll do um, a light wash. So this first one, this first wash is going to be whatever color you want your top lightest color to be. So you can see in these bubbles, um, those were with my first wash. So you don't want to make it very dark, uh, the first one that you do so that you can get the contrast with uh, the deeper layers. And then after we do that first wash, we'll make some bubbles and you can use um, lids or uh, I have a stencil that has different size uh, circles, which is really handy uh, for me, uh, but you can also use other stuff. So for example, I also use this glass dish to just mark the circle around that one. So use what you have. You don't have to have fancy stuff. Uh, and then after we make the circles, then we'll paint around those circles, let it dry. So if you have a blow dryer, that's going to be handy for you, or you can just get some wine or coffee or whatever you want and just let it dry naturally uh, while you enjoy your drink. So then after it dries, we'll go back and do a second layer of bubbles uh, of those circles and then we'll paint around those and um, using that paint, we'll make some marks on the higher ones and then same process. So circle, paint, dry, circle, paint, dry. Is, is what we're going for. So the tools that you need for that, like I said, the hair dryer is really handy. Um, something to make circles with. Uh, the brushes that I'm gonna use, I'm probably gonna use this one mostly. This is a size 10 silver black velvet brush. It's nice because it has a pretty nice point that you can get in these little spaces with, um, but you can still cover a lot of area if you turn it sideways. Um, you can also use, um, when we get to the marks on the bubbles uh, you can use brushes that are a little bit fatter at the tip so you can see how this is a little bit more round um, more rounded so that when you make these marks it doesn't get as pointy right so you can make it a little bit more circular if you use some of those brushes you can still use a pointed brush if you want for the smaller marks but um, these ones can make your life a little bit easier okay and uh, at the very end, we add uh, some highlights in here. So for the highlights, I use Bleed Proof White. Uh, this is really excellent. If you don't have Bleed Proof White, you can always use um, white gouache. Or uh, if you have acrylic, that is okay. It'll pull up probably some of the paint underneath. But I mean, if you're doing it for just a fun project, the acrylic white will work just fine. Um, and then you can also use a gel pen. Uh, which is pretty easy to, to use. Um, I actually like this brand a little bit better. This is Signo Uniball uh, brand. I'm out of this one. So I'm gonna be using the Jelly Roll today. Uh, and I use this to make those little dots. So if you don't have the Bleed Proof White, you can also use the Jelly Roll to make a lot more of the, the markings, but use what you have. You don't have to be super fancy. Okay, and for the paints, I'm mostly using M. Graham paints and uh, the palette that I chose for this is more of this, um, let's see if you can see it, um, this uh, bluish, greenish area. You can see my palette's super messy, um, but I don't mind if I have, you know, little bits of colors in different places. I think it makes painting more interesting. Um, so like I said, I'm, I'm gonna use mostly this bluish, greenish stuff. Um, you'll see me pull from this one, which is black, and that one I use for the very end to get that very deep, rich color. Um, and then this color over here is like an indigo, so it's also like a very deep blue. 
Okay, so let's get going. And uh, the first layer again is just a wash over the whole thing. So I'm actually gonna use, you can use uh, your regular brush for this, but I'm actually gonna use a little bit thicker brush so I can do it a little bit faster. The uh, paper that I'm using is 100% um, cotton paper. And this is Arches brand cotton paper. It holds a lot of water, which is nice, but it also takes a long time to dry. So if you're uh, looking for something a little bit faster, you can use maybe a different kind of uh, paper. So I'm just getting it all wet first. And then I'm gonna use uh, my other brush and drop in some color. So on this one I did, just like a very smooth wash. This one I'm gonna try um, maybe some more textures in the bubbles. We'll see how it turns out. So I'm just gonna mix some, make sure you can see this. Okay, so I'm just gonna make some of these blues. Again, keeping it very, very light, lots of water. some green that was a little bit dark so I'm gonna add more water to lighten that up I mean, it's a little bit darker. that'll about do so now i'm going to turn on my uh hair dryer so i'm gonna mute my sound don't worry i'm still here your sound is still working i'm just um muting my microphone so that you're not blown out of the water <laughs>
Okay, so uh, my paper's now dry, or just about dry. Um, so I'm gonna go in and um, paint or uh, draw some of the bubbles to start with. And again, this first layer is gonna be your lightest bubble layer. Um, it's okay if you have little pieces that you don't really like, or there's um, areas where like, oh, I don't really like how the paint came out there, um, because a lot of it's gonna end up being covered up. Uh, so if there are places that you do like on your painting, where the texture came out or an area that just feels good, um, you can capture that in your bubble. So I kind of like this dark uh, green that I got here. So I'm gonna try and capture that in one of my bubbles. I'm gonna use my jelly roll. And it's probably hard to see on the camera, um, but it's just a circle and um, you'll be able to also see this repeated in other layers. Uh, when we go back to paint these, um, circles are actually kind of hard to paint <laughs> um, with a, a paintbrush, like to get it perfect around the edge. But the nice thing about these bubbles is that you don't have to get it perfect uh, around the edge. So let me just show you this uh, real quick. So you can see, I can get it close in the camera. Oh, camera's swigging out. Okay, so you can see this line right here. This is actually where I accidentally painted over um, the outline of my bubble. But because I went back and uh, re-outlined it, then it just becomes part of the bubble and part of the um, design. So it's really friendly <laughs> for mistakes, which I really like because I tend to fall into mistakes and um, I really enjoy being able to make those um, mistakes part of my painting. I'm going to do another one right here. Okay, I do want another big one. Grab. Um, also just some advice on this first one um don't make too many bubbles <laughs> um, for for yourself you could just start with a few and you're gonna get more as you go back but if you do too many up front then it's gonna be really hard to place them as you go um, further down put one So now I'm going to start my next layer and again it's the same process so you're going to start with water uh, and then you're going to add your color and you're going to do it around the circles that you've made. So right now this is clean water, but before this dries, I'm going back in with more of my same color and dropping in paint. Now this one you do wanna make a little bit darker than your first layer.
With watercolor, you can see if I put clean water on, um, the paint that's already down looks a lot darker. And so because watercolor dries lighter, um, sometimes if you put the next layer down, it can trick you into thinking that you've put more paint down when you haven't. So on your next layer, do put maybe just a little bit more paint. Um, so again, you can make it a little bit darker. We're only doing a few layers on this. So eventually we'll get to black so between you know your lightest color and black, there's a number of stages in between for how dark your colors can be. So you'll just want to make sure you get dark enough so that you can differentiate between the layers that you have. So you can see how I went over that line there. That's totally okay. So we're going to go back in a little bit later and make that line more apparent. enough for my second layer. I'm just gonna get a few water spots here because I'm trying to get some of the texture on the back so when I add uh, some water you can see it just a little bit how it makes extra textures in the water, watercolor. Okay. And here we go. Oh, one more thing, I almost forgot. Uh, if you do forget, it's okay, you can go back later and do it, but since we're here, uh, we'll do it. So uh, with whatever color you just did your layer with, add some of that color to your bubbles on the inside. So you're gonna follow the curve of the bubble and get some of that color And you'll be adding more colors as you go, so you don't have to get like crazy, but. hair drying so again I'm gonna mute myself uh, so that you don't hear the loud loud hair dryer and I'm gonna secure <laughs> my painting this time so it doesn't blow away and uh, if you're working at home I hope you're enjoying yourself and um, yeah 
Hope your painting's going well, and I'll see you after I dry this. You can see when I'm drying, I often uh, just gently lay my hand on top of my paper. That's me uh, checking to see how dry it is. So watercolor paper will often feel just a little bit cold uh, if it's still wet. And you can check that as you are drying your painting. Okay, so next layer. <clears throat> and again, it's the same process. So we're going to uh, 
draw more outlines and then we'll paint around those bubbles and when we paint around those bubbles we'll pull some of that color onto the circles that we've made. I think that's good for this layer for me and I'm going to paint in the next one again laying down water and eventually um, we'll get to a layer where you don't have to put down water first <laughs> um, you can just put the paint down because there's small enough spaces but for right now I'm gonna put down more water And go darker on this one than you did on the last.
lot of people find uh, this kind of painting really relaxing because it's something where you can kind of let your mind wander and you don't have to think too much about where everything's going. You just follow the pattern, making circles, laying down paint, making more circles, and drying. Okay, so now I'm taking my paint that I have and just adding some texture and some spots on my bubbles. Following the curve. And then adding some of that same paint to your first layer bubbles. But rounder brush because you can see I'm getting a lot more points than I'd like so I'm going to make it a little bit rounder fingerprint there but that's all right because I've got more textured background and I'm gonna paint over it anyway so even if you make mistakes again it's a very forgiving project adding in some water bubbles And now I'm going to dry again, so see you in a few minutes.
Okay, so again, our next layer, gonna do the same thing, gonna do some circles and then um, paint around it and then add some details to your up, upper bubbles. So because my sections are a little bit smaller now, I can actually just grab the straight paint uh, and paint on as I go and add water, other colors in that section. So if I want to spread it out a little bit more, add some water. This is our second to last layer. So uh, don't go quite black yet. Your very last one will be black, but you can go pretty dark. So you can see on this one that I have, this is my second to last layer here. And those are pretty dark.
You can probably see as I go down in layers, I'm also adding a lot more of those darker colors that I already have. It's because the next layer is going to be black. And so I can go pretty dark with what I have. crazy by the time you get down to about this layer you can look back at the very first layers that you did and it looks almost white compared to what you have now which is so interesting how our eyes perceive color so differently depending on what surrounds it Okay, and now we're gonna go back and add some of the color. I think I forgot to do that on the last layer, but that's fine if you do, because it's all kind of the same colors.
I <laughs> got myself a little bit. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a very messy painter. That's okay. I just get absorbed in the process and I can clean up messes later. When you're adding um, the color on the bubbles, don't be afraid to go out to the edge of the bubble. I can add some more dynamic space to what you have. It looks like I forgot that bubble, which is just fine. So we'll just go back and edit. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the very last one. dry yet after I added the details so we're gonna dry first and then add the last bubble. Okay, 
Now adding the last bubbles. Okay, we're going to add the black. And you can do, you can do straight black uh, for this last layer. Um, I'm actually going to mix a little bit of my, a little bit of my indigo with my black, uh, just to give it a, a little bit more similar feeling. There's a lot of uh, watercolor artists who um, don't use black in their paintings. They just, they make it with the other colors they have and it does create a very rich um, color for you. I like using black for a lot of these like very end highlights and accents because uh, just the very deep black I feel gives it uh, such a nice finish. You can see how it really makes those bubbles stand out. One of the exercises you can also do with this painting that is um, also pretty relaxing is use it um, as a way to let go of your thoughts. If you're struggling with thoughts that are on your mind, 
So uh, my background is actually in clinical psychology and stress management. And uh, one of the techniques you can do is imagine the thoughts that you're struggling with or the thoughts that keep bouncing around your head as bubbles or waves or clouds or leaves or whatever, whatever suits your fancy and imagine those thoughts on those bubbles just floating away. It gives you some space and time from them where it makes it easier to uh, get some perspective if you're just needing a break from the thoughts that you have. So while you're doing this activity, if you're doing it for relaxation, so one thing that you can do as you paint your bubbles is imagine each one as a thought uh, or concern or worry that you have and as you paint let that thought become separate from you and it's down on the paper and you just let it go. Oh, almost got my hand in that one. You can see I'm a again. I'm a very messy painter, so uh, I always forget to watch my my hand when I place it down. A trick that you can use that I always forget is you can use your pinky to place on a dry part of the paper uh, and use that as an anchor point for your hand. Like I said before, if you do get it on your hand, it's not a big deal. You just clean it up later. If it creates a spot on your paper, you just figure out how to work it into your painting. Now we're going back and adding those details. Don't get too crazy with the really dark black. Um, if you add some of your dark blue to it, then it makes it a little bit better. But if it's too much with the black, it can overwhelm the other colors you've got going. like a few of mine need some maybe just regular blue and your painting is going to be a little bit different obviously we're using you know different paints and paint brushes and you know we're different artists and so your painting is going to be a little bit different and it'll inform you so if you look for spots so 
here's a really good example of working in. So you see where I got some black here for my hand. I'm just gonna work that into uh, the painting and we're gonna make that part of this blue. So you can see it's still missing some of that pizzazz that this one has. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, redefine some of the edges of my circles that got lost. I didn't have as many in this one get lost as this one. Um, so I don't have to do a whole lot of redefining the circles. But if you do have a lot where you ended up crossing over into the bubble, this is a really good stage to uh, redefine the outside. And then uh, I'm going to add in some little bubbles and then we'll get our bleed proof white. Okay, I think that's good enough for mine. Okay, and it looks like some of the black paint is still not quite dry. So I'm actually going to save the little bubbles until after we've done the bleed proof white. I've just got a little bit of extra paint here. I'm going to try and make it dry a little faster. bleed proof white and so I'll start with uh, this little it's a little bit rounder brush it's a size four this is a low Cornell it's actually one of the brushes that I used to use in face painting <laughs> when I used to be a professional face painter now in the times before COVID Okay, and with the bleed proof white, let me put it on. You can also get a little bit of water and fade it. And that can give you a little bit more of that glossy look.
and I'm just following the curve around the bubble and um, try and vary your line width. So if you try and do, I'll show you on the smaller one. If you do all the same, it's all right, uh, but it's gonna look a little bit better if you can vary some of the shape and line. And most of the white that I'm doing is going to be centered around, most of the bigger blobs are going to be centered around this top part. It'll give a little bit better illusion that the light is coming down this way. But if you have it in other places, that's okay too. Like, I think bubbles are one of those things that are also, like I said, we're really forgiving. <laughs> You can see how I'm just grabbing the white and fading it in. For some of that glossy look. Especially on the back ones, um, you don't want to make the light uh, stand out too, too much compared to the front ones. So you can use that fading technique to kind of pull them into the background a little bit. So if you have a really big bubble up front, you're gonna want to make your strokes a lot bigger on this front one compared to the back ones because it's so much closer to you. So this one's gonna get a big ol' big ol' highlight.
looking at my painting and some of these edges maybe aren't um, as clear still even with the outline there so I'm going to go back and add just a little bit of darker color around the edge I think I just need a little bit more blue on this one. Make that stand out. black. While I have the bleed proof white out, I'm actually going to grab um, a much smaller brush. Uh, this is a size 6. And I'm going to add some of these um, reflective spots. And you'll see when I add it, it makes it sparkle <laughs> a little bit more. And I just love that effect. So um, what I'm going to do uh, on here is I'm going to add a, a spot on the top and bottom, the top one being a little bit brighter, and try and, for most of them anyway, keep to that diagonal. So as if the sun is coming in this way, um, it's going to be reflecting through the top of the bubble, and then when it hits the back of the bubble, you're going to get some reflection. So you'll see uh, with these, I have mostly this direction. And I do have some that are a little bit oriented the other way, um, but if you keep them mostly in that direction, then uh, it'll create more cohesiveness for your painting. And it's um, to have like a few others that are maybe slightly altered is fine because you're gonna have a reverse reflection. So light bouncing off here and then reflecting there. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Here's my bright spot and the spot at the back. Sometimes, okay, I sometimes get a little crazy with these, <laughs> so uh, as you're doing them, just know that it's possible to get a little bit crazy with these. I'm not sure if I've found where that good balance is, but here we are. Can you see how much sparkle that's adding already, though, to this painting?
Okay, good job guys. Just about done. So now I think the black is pretty dry. <laughs> See, I have it all over my hands. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna do um, little dots. And what I like to do for my little dots is um, in order to make them feel like there's movement, I actually go um, in little spurts, I guess you could say, where you start with maybe a little bit bigger ones at the bottom and then work up to uh, a little bit smaller. And I like to do it in a row. So even if you have a couple of them next to each other, so it, it doesn't necessarily look like, you know, I've made any lines here, but that's the general feel that I create with um, the spots is that upward movement. And I find that it really helps to um, make the painting come together in a different kind of way. And a wet spot. So it looks like this bleed proof white is still wet. So I'm just gonna adjust it. And there you go. See? No problem. Okay, so as I'm finishing up here, uh, I'm just scanning my page to see where my eyes are drawn. Uh, and if you're looking at your painting and your eyes are drawn oh, to this spot, for example, um, I'm saying, okay, my viewer as they're scanning this might be pulled down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some, at least interest there, because that's not quite the spot that I would love them to look at. So I'm gonna um, either create interest there or um, pull it back a little bit so it's more hidden. Okay, and there you have it. Bubbles, 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 bubbles. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. 
and if there's anything you'd like to see uh, in a tutorial or painting, please let me know, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye!